Uh, the first defining moment in my life uh, happened when I was 14 years old and my 16-year-old sister, only sister, passed away with cancer. I started a journey of uh, feeling like everyone that I would love would abandon me, would leave me. So I turned to uh, the world to try to avoid the pain and the pain that I couldn't avoid uh, I tried to numb through the means of the world. I expected the world and the, the things of the world to provide comfort and satisfaction. And, and I decided seven years later that the solution was to uh, kill myself. So I decided a uh, prescription of suicide was the, the only answer. And I remember going to work this one particular day and I was so excited. I was filled with joy, that a perverted sense of joy that I had figured out the solution to my to my pain and my sorrow. I was talking to my friend and she said, and she was as backslidden as I was, and she says, Julie, let's go to church. The only one who can help us here is God. We were sitting on the back row and this is one of those perfect examples of what, um, what the enemy meant for your harm, God intends for your good. And so um, he called uh, my friend and I up to the front of the church. He said, there's two ladies on the back row. The Lord wants to talk to you, come up front. And so we're sitting there and, and I knew that he was talking to us, but I wasn't about to acknowledge it. And so I sort of looked down and I started looking at the bulletin like it was just some sort of interesting read. And, and I asked my friend, I said, is he talking to us? And she said, yeah, I think he is. And so um, I said, I'm not going up there. And he said again, he said, I hate to point, but you two ladies in the back, come up here, the Lord wants to speak to you. And I'm like, I am not going up there. And so the third time, and this is how incredible God is and how much he loves us. But the third time he said, I beg you, the Lord will not let me go any further in this service until you t two ladies come up front. And then he um, looked at me and he says, the Lord says, you are my prophetess teacher. And I reverse the curse in the name of Jesus Christ and those uh, who rise up against you shall be condemned and on and on and on. And I was amazed that the God of the universe stopped what he was doing to talk to two wayward kids who were completely lost. And in that very second in time, I instantly fell in love with the Lord. I instantly fell in love with Him. He had apprehended me and I couldn't get enough of Him. Five years ago, uh, life was going great and I met a man and we married in June of 2006 and I had all these, you know, expectations and we're going to do this together, we're going to do that together and it was a good marriage until one day he um, came home and he um, threw his ring at me and tried to rip mine off my finger. He decided um, instead of talking that he would leave me a note when I left the house for a little bit that he would leave me a note saying I'm sorry about all this and I've ruined your life and I'll never be the man of God that you want me to be. He had um, taken clothes, shoes, furniture. There was not a not a shred of evidence that he had ever lived in that home. My life, my heart was shattered, it was murdered. Uh, all of my expectations were dashed and I remember thinking uh, at certain points, God, I have fallen off of your radar. When my sister passed away, it, it set in motion me thinking that everyone that I would love would abandon me. And uh, the Lord has healed me from that now and, and I don't expect that. I, I broke off bitter root expectancies and judgments through certain uh, ministries that I became involved with and, and there was one particular issue where I felt like I would walk into church and I would um, have a scarlet letter that looked like a less than sign that um, you know, I was the one who, whose husband ab abandoned her and, and I felt such shame and, and I felt so unwanted and so unloved. And um, one day the Lord came to my rescue again and he said, what does it say in the Word? And the Word is, is, is the hope. It says that Jesus endured the, the shame of the cross for the joy that was set before Him that he endured the shame, that he paid for that shame, that he took it upon himself that day. And so I didn't have to carry it anymore. And so he uh, reached down deep and he took it from me. I, I released it to him, I gave it to him. And, and 
He's, a, he, he's given me joy. We give him uh, our ashes and he gives us beauty and we give him our despair and he gives us peace back. As Isaiah 68 says that, um, that you did things that we didn't even expect and I invite him to do that in my life and I know that uh, with him having the, the pen in his hand, he will write great chapters. Thank you.